Well, let's get some people on here. Let's do that. So we're going to get started in just a minute. I'm going to get my book out. This is the power. Can you see that? Knowledge is not power. Applied knowledge is power. So we're going to jump on that in just a minute. We're going to let some people come on board. If people come on board. Oh, looky there. Dig deeper. Where are you at in your life? The question of the day, what are you doing to make your life better? That should be the question. Is how is all of that being engaged? So I think it's important that you think about life. You think about the success that you're trying to have in life. All of that brings you to a certain apocalypse of doing good, doing bad, making the right decisions. And so that's kind of what we're here for. That's what we're all about. That's what we're going to discuss today is all those different things. And so this is something that we've not done before, but we get a lot of requests for it. And that is about book reviews and what kind of books do I read and what kind of books do I refer or what should someone else be reading if they're in real estate investing or just in business in general and and that's really why we're bringing you these Wednesdays 1230 dig deeper book review let me get a mic check check one <laughs> Can you hear me out there loud and clear? Chuck, chuck, chuck. <laughs> so I, um, I think it's important that you understand this. What is it that you need to understand? You need to understand growth. How do we grow? Who do we want to become? You know, here's the thing about life. We can get caught up so quickly in the grind, as I say. We're grinding, we're grinding, we're trying to build a better business or a better life for ourselves. So we're constantly grinding, but we sometimes forget that the purpose of the grind is so that we become better people, better in business owners, better parents, better you know, relationships, better, you know, uh, sisters, brothers, children's, we become better. And uh, we get caught in the grind. And uh, it's, listen, it's not your fault that you get caught in the grind because it's your passion. Your passion is what drives you to be better. Your passion is what drives you to grind it out. Your passion is what drives you to connect with a great company. Your passion is what drives you to seek relationships and to seek, you know, that family environment of kinsmanship. That's your passion. And passion is super powerful. I mean, it is probably one of the most powerful things that you can have is passion. A lot of times in life, we let passion get destroyed from other people telling us nonsense. And that brings me to our topic today, which is, I don't know if you guys can see that, but this is the book we're on today. And I have it on the screen. Let me, how about I just show it to you on the screen? That would be easier. It's called Boundaries. What boundaries are you setting in your life? What boundaries have you created to give yourself the understanding of how to grow, how to be stronger? What boundaries? And so I want to share this book with you today in our Dig Deeper book review. So hashtag Dig Deeper. <laughs> Let me see that. Let me see some hashtags. Dig Deeper. Because why? Dig Deeper is all about your life. Are you, are you willing to dig deeper in your life to find what you're truly meant to be? Are you willing to dig deeper to become the best you can be? Are you willing to dig deeper to become everything that you set out to be? That, my friends, is what the Dig Deeper book review is all about. So you've got to be willing to dig deeper. And, and that doesn't just mean 
in your business. That means in your life. Because let me tell you something, we were all meant for great things. I mean, all meant for great things. And great things only come when we're willing to dig deeper into who we are. And so sometimes when we start to dig deeper in our lives, we forget about boundaries that we need. We need boundaries to hold ourselves accountable. We need boundaries to understand that we can get off track without these boundaries, okay? Look at all the hashtags. Dig deeper, dig deeper. Love it, love it, love it. So let me give some call outs. Dig deeper here. We got Amy Jones, dig deeper. Paris, dig deeper. We got some dig deepers in here. Christina, dig deeper. I love it. You guys, I love the dig deeper. Okay, so here's something else. Um, if you have any questions as we go through this, type them in. I, I want to answer your questions. I'm going to go through this book review. Listen, I can't spend four hours with you on this book. It's a pretty thick book, but I have highlighted some very important things in this book that I, I'm going to share with you. I'm going to read some out of it. But I also want you to open up to your mind to start thinking about what you could dig deeper in. I also want you to start thinking about some things like, what are you not setting boundaries in your life on? What are controlling you? So here's some of the things we're going to pull out. What does a boundary look like? And, and some of the topics we're going to talk about here is me and not me. How do we define who you are and who you're not meant to be? Also, good in and bad out. See, we have to understand that we're in control of our sphere, okay? We're in control of our sphere. What we let in is our choice. Those are boundaries. Those are invisible boundaries, okay? We're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about boundary problems. Yes, the power to say no. It's a very important word, no, okay? And also, two types of controllers that are everywhere in your life and you've got to be able to recognize them and get them out. We're also going to talk about boundaries and the workplace. You heard me. Listen, I'm all about family culture in my workplace. I'm all about giving people a safe place to work in. I'm all about giving people a safe community, a safe family. I want people to understand that we're not just a company. We're a family that we are really almost an extended family of our students. And our goal is to not only, you know, be out here and doing our real estate, but also helping people like yourself know that you have a safe place to come to to help you get the education you want to grow your business. So we're going to talk about setting workplace boundaries. We're going to talk about finding your life's work. What were you meant to be? And are you cultivating that? Okay. We're also going to talk about boundaries and yourself, our out-of-control soul. That's what we're going to talk about. And we're going to end with don't be a victim. Don't be a victim. We, no one wants to be around a victim, and it's so easy to put ourselves in a category of don't be a victim. Okay? So listen to me very clearly. This book, if you go get this book, it's called Boundaries. Um, and this is when to say yes, how to say no, to take control of your life. It's written by an author that I am a tremendous fan of, Dr. Henry Cloud, and it's also co-written by Dr. Jones Townsend. Okay, Dr. Henry Cloud is a he's a business consultant. He's a minister. He writes a lot about business stuff and personal growth, but he also connects it with a Christian form. So I share that with you because if those of you that know me know that I am a Christian to the core. And I think that I am only where I am because I've been blessed by my Father in Heaven to guide me down this path. And so I'm sharing a lot of stuff with you that will reflect, obviously, my core value. And, it, you know, and at the end of the day, you know, you're going to believe what you want to believe, but what I want you to take out of this book, and I don't want you, if, if you're saying, oh, well, you know, I, that's just not how I am. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. You believe you, I believe me, but at the same time, there's great value in this book. So don't be afraid of this book. Don't be closed-minded. Open your mind, open your heart, and you'll find the path that you're trying to be on, okay? So with that said, let me open this book up, okay? So we're going to dig...
deeper. Yes, we are. So this book is really made up of about 16 chapters, but it's broken into three categories. The first category is what are boundaries? The second one is, is boundary conflicts. And the last one is, is developing healthy boundaries. And so inside of each one of those categories is several chapters. I'm going to talk about really four or five of these chapters to help kind of get you going. And one is what does boundaries look like? Boundary problems, boundaries at work, boundaries in yourself, and the victim process. So I'm going to shoot over and talk about some stuff I've highlighted in here. So what are boundaries look like? So inside of this, there's a topic in here under invisible boundary lines and responsibilities. And this is for you to understand what I'm trying to tell you about boundaries and from what uh, Dr. Henry Cloud had said is we understand boundaries are like if you have a fence up, you know that that's the boundary of the property. But in life, we don't set invisible fences for ourselves. We just tend to move with the flow. We tend to just kind of um, be part of whatever, but not really have a core value or a core understanding, something that we can stand behind and really be part of. So he talks about that right out the gate. But he goes into me and not me. Now listen to this. Boundaries define us. They define what is me and what is not me. A boundary shows me where I end and someone else begins, leading me to a sense of ownership. That's what I want you to understand. Ownership is the key. This, this, if you go through this book, you'll realize there's a big connection with what he's teaching you in here and how he's teaching you not to be a victim and to realize that you have ownership over everything in your life. You have ownership, okay? No one else. Every choice you make is your choice. You have to think about that because you have the ability to do anything you want to do. When you have the right team and the right support, and we're going to talk about that in here about how to have the right support around you. It gives you the ability to own your own life and build from there, okay? He goes on to say, taking, listen to me, taking responsibility for my life opens up many different options. However, if I do not own my life, my choices and options become very limited. Now think about that. That is a, that's not having boundaries in your choices. When you become a understanding the core of who you are, and you say to yourself, I will take responsibility for my own life, and that is going to give me more options because I'm responsible. However, if I do not own my life, my choices and options become very limited because I'm limited to what others tell me I should be doing. You with me? Follow me now, okay, because it gets better. So that's a boundary we need to pay attention to. Here's another one he says. In addition to showing us what we are responsible for, boundaries help us to define what is not on our property or what we want in our life and what we are not responsible for. You with me? Not responsible for, okay? And this is a big thing that a lot of people need to pay attention to is that sometimes we feel like, and I'm going to talk about that in here too, that we're responsible for everything. We feel like this sense of ownership and uh, this sense of uh, entitled, like I have to do this because they're my family or I have to do this because they're my friend. If it does not correlate with your core foundation, let it go. Let it go. You have to let it go. It's not part of who you are. You do not need to cross that boundary. This is where no is so powerful. Now, in the next section of this chapter, he talks about two and four. He says, many times others have burdens, listen, that are too big to bear. They, they do not have enough strength, resources, or knowledge to carry the load, and they need help. Think about that. Do you understand burden is something that gets created in our lives because we allow it in? Listen, that's a boundary we didn't set because we allow it in. The other thing that reason that burden weighs us down is because we are not prepared to handle those burdens. We're not prepared to be able to create the strength, the resources, and the knowledge. So we have to go and we have to find those resources. We have to find the knowledge and we have to get the help that we can to be able to create, create, create the strength to move through our burdens, okay? 
So what's that? Toby says that's a 10-4. <laughs> I love it, Toby. You're with me, man. You're with me. All right. Welcome to the Dig Deeper book review. If you're just joining us, today's class is all about you digging deeper. Hashtag dig deeper. Let me see some more of them hashtags. Hashtag dig, dig deeper. Why is this important for you? Because this is your Wednesday dig deeper. Every Wednesday we come to you at 1230 because I want you to learn to be a, a person in your life that's in control of what you want. And the only way you do that is by digging deeper. You got to dig deeper in your soul. You got to dig deeper in your faith. You got to dig deeper with your family. You got to dig deeper with your freedom. You got to dig deeper in your fitness. You got to dig deeper in your fellowship. That's our five F's. That's our core foundation. That's the core of my life. That's the core of what I believe in. That's the core of my boundaries. That's the core of this company is we dig deeper in those five F's. Okay. You too can dig deeper. I got some dig deeper showing up again, don't I? I love this. You guys are great. Hey, if you like it so far, let me see some thumbs up or oh, some hearts. I love the hearts. Makes me want to hug all you guys. <laughs> Look at that. I love it. I love it. I love it. I got a little, little iPad. Now. I, I'm, I'm watching this. <laughs> That's great. Okay, look at the love. So, here's the next part I want to bring you into. Oh, and by the way, if you just joined us, we're going through our Dig Deeper book review of the boundary series that Dr. Henry Cloud has. He has a ton of these boundary books, but this is about when to say yes, how to say no to take control of your life. It's digging deeper. That's why it's called Dig Deeper. Okay, it's by Dr. Henry Cloud. Now, the next part that he, we're going to talk about is his section here that says, good in, bad out. Woo, how strong is that? Do you realize sometimes the bad out is the people closest to us? They're the ones holding us back. They're the ones making us not believe in ourselves. They're the ones that put the doubt in our head that we can't be great. We can't be kings and queens of our own life. That they're the ones that tell us that it's not possible. They're the ones that tell us that, oh, because no one else in the family has done it, how could you do it? But let me explain something to you. When you start digging deeper in your own life, that's when stuff changes. So don't be a victim to other people crossing your boundaries, okay? Don't be a victim to other people crossing your boundaries, all right? So good in, bad out. He says, boundaries help us to dis distinguish. Now, you guys know me. I have a hard time with big words. But he says, boundaries help us to distinguish our property, which also is who our soul and who we are, so that we can take care of it. You understand that? Listen to this. I'm going to read it again for you. Boundaries help us to distinguish our property. Now, he's using property, but he's what he means by property is who we are, okay? To distinguish who we are so that we can take care of us. You got me? Take care of us. Take care of our soul. Take care of our mind. Take care of our our boundaries, okay? They help us to guard our heart and our bodies and our minds, right? With all diligence. We need to keep things that will nurture us inside of our fences and keep things that will harm us outside of our fence line. In short, boundaries help us keep the good in and the bad out. Listen to that. Man, please tell me you just got what I put down right there. Like that, listen, if all you did was get this book and read that one thing, this makes sense. Exactly. This makes sense. You're getting it, Toby. All right. So let me, I just love this section. Good in, bad out. Like if people could concept that, do you know how many lives would start to change out there? Because he says here, by setting these boundaries for ourselves, they help us guard our heart with all diligence, okay? We need to keep things that will nurture us inside our fence line and keep things that will harm us outside. In short, boundaries help us keep the good in and the bad out, okay? Get that. Now, let's move on over. I can keep you guys here all day talking about this. Now, this is a big topic. You can't see it, but it's all about other people. Mm, other people. Do you realize a lot of the stuff that happens to us in our life is because what we allow other people to tell us. 
That's what it's about. So listen to this. You need to depend on others to help you set and keep boundaries. Listen. Gosh, please listen to this. Because finding the ability to create boundaries only through a support group, their support system is giving you the strength to say no to abuse and control for the first time in your life. When you're able to put yourself, we call it fellowship, okay? In our five F's, we call it fellowship. And that is connecting with like-minded people with the same goal to take you to the same place that they're living or are already in. <clears throat> in our core value, fellowship is all about us being able to have a long-term relationship with our students so that we can help support them grow to the level that they want to be. Okay. He goes on to say there are two reasons why you need others to help with boundaries. The first is your most basic need in life is for relationships. Think about it. We are not built and designed to be walking alone. We're not built that way. Being out there trying to build a business alone is probably the most loneliest thing there ever has been. Not having some type of support around you, not having a family to help you grow, not having a coach or a mentor is where people make a huge mistake. They try to go at it alone. And listen, listen, the first is that your most basic need in life is for a relationship, whether that's an intimate relationship or that's a friend relationship or a mental relationship you need it. Okay. People suffer much People suffer much to have relationships. They may put up with abuse because they fear their partners will leave them and they will be alone if they stand up to them. Do you understand that that is a boundary that was never set with the person who was seeking a relationship to fill a void? When we're in control of our lives and we have boundaries and we know who we are, we do not seek another person to fill a void in our life. We seek another person to be a companion, to grow in life together, to build an empire together, to seek what God has put us here to do, and that is to live a glorious life. That is what a relationship is. It's not to fill a void. It's not to fill loneliness. And that's what we have to think about. Now, number two, he says, the other reason we need others is because we need new input and, listen, teaching. That's the whole fellowship I've been talking about. That's why we, we need someone in our life telling us what we're doing wrong, what we're doing right, what's good, what's bad. We need that, okay? Many people have been taught um, that their families and their boundaries are, are basically irrelevant, mean, or selfish. Now, that's something you want to listen to. How many times have you ever set a boundary for yourself and said, look, I'm not going to do this, and you get accused of being selfish? Think about that one. I've set many a boundaries in my life, and, and a lot of those were in very deep relationships. Um, uh, I set a huge boundary in an, in an ex-marriage I was in. And I had to set those boundaries because the direction I was going in that was not in the line of my core belief. And that was a very hard boundary I had to set. And I was called selfish for setting that boundary. But I'm going to tell you this, guys. Sometimes in life, the hardest boundaries we have to set are the facing the people that don't understand our boundaries. They come up with their own conclusions of who you are and what, you're, what you've done. And it's not your place to try to sell them on your boundaries. Boundaries are personal. They're not to go out and try to get other people to believe your boundaries. They're yours. They're nobody else's. So don't let other people try to influence or control those boundaries. And they're going to be tough. I've had to set boundaries with my families. And I had to distance myself from some of the people I love the most. Because let me tell you something. They were not in congruence with my boundaries. Okay? So he goes on to say here, these people need a good understanding and they need a support system to help them stand against the guilt that comes from this. Okay? Inside that tell them lies to keep them from overcoming your boundaries and not being able to justify your boundaries, okay? And that's why people do that. All right, let me move on real quick. Boundary problems. I'm going to read these to you real quick. 
To feel safe in such an evil world, children, now this is real big for you children. If you've got children out there, give me a thumbs up because I want you to listen to this. I'm big on my kids. I'm big on children. That's absolutely true, Zach. Thanks, Victor. I'm glad you're digging this, man. Um, so if you have children, listen to this. I feel safe in such an evil world. Children need to have the power to say things like, no, I disagree. I will not. I choose not to. Stop that. It hurts. It's wrong. That's bad. I don't like it when you touch me there or talk to me that way. We need to embrace our children right now with boundaries. And not just in boundaries in their personal life and who they are, but we need to let them know that this is their rights to say these things. That this is their life and they have their own boundaries. And at the same time, we need to make them understand that they need to set boundaries for their expectations and not to be culturalized by the school systems and what other people tell them so that they can have the power within to grow to be great individuals, entrepreneurs, investors that they are meant to be. And it starts at a young age, okay? Blocking a child's ability to say no handicaps that child for life because they feel like that, oh, I can't say that, it's wrong. I might hurt their feelings. That's the type of stuff they say. And that builds the child into an avenue that they never understand boundaries for themselves. They only understand the consequences in which their emotional state makes them feel from what the other person has projected on them. That is not the way we raise kings and queens from our children. You understand? We need to make them empowered by their own decisions and let them know that they have control of their life and the choices they make. We need to start teaching our children how to dig deeper and become greater and be stronger so that they have the faith to believe in themselves as they get older. Okay, because you think about it, how now as you're an adult, how long has it taken you to get there? So if we start our children off Man, imagine how great they will be. Imagine the power that we put into them. Think about that, okay? So it says this type of boundary conflicts is called compliance, okay? Compl or compliance people have fuzzy and indistinct and, and boundaries. They melt into the demands and needs of others. Listen to that! That's what I'm talking about. So compliance is, is when we've been taught as a child, oh, don't talk back to me. Don't say that. You do what I tell you to do. We don't teach them, hey, have boundaries that are respectful. So what happens is as they grow older, they become compliant to what they've been taught. So then when it comes time into the real world, they melt into the demands of other people. Control this, okay? All right, I'm all excited about this one. This is a good book, by the way. All right, so here's another one. This is um, a boundary problem still. Not respecting others' boundaries, okay? Listen to me. What do you mean you're quitting? Do you understand that when you say I'm quitting, it's because you've started listening to the false boundaries that your conscious is trying to tell you because it likes to be complacent. Your natural instinct is to be complacent. It's to be comfortable. It's, it's hard. Look, I just shot a video last night with my daughter, and it was all about being uncomfortable. It was about being uncomfortable and how we want to be uncomfortable. We want to live in an uncomfortable state because that is when we're in growth. That is when we're growing as people. That is when we're engaged and we're, we're building upon our life, okay? So here's two of the controls, or con here's two of the controllers that you'll run into your life. Number one is aggressive controllers, okay? These people clearly don't listen to others' boundaries. You say no, they keep pushing forward. You say, I don't want to do that, they make you feel um, almost an intrusive way to come into your life. Number two is manipulative controllers. Lord knows we have more of these in this world than ever, okay? These are the people that are less honest than the aggressive controllers. Their manipulators try to per persuade people out of their boundaries. So, for instance, you're not a drinker. I'm not a drinker, okay? I go out with people and they say, oh, let's just have a drink. Let's have a drink. Oh, one more drink. One more drink. No. Oh, but Zach, it'll be this. It'll be fun. And then, uh, you understand, like, you've got to wake up at that moment um, and understand that that's a manipulative controller. They may not even realize they're doing it, 
but that's what's happening. Their subconscious doesn't want you to leave because then they feel bad. They want you there. You just, you don't have to say, look, these are my boundaries. You just stick to your core boundaries. Look, I'll go out with some friends and have a drink, but I, I'm not the type that's going to be like, oh, I can't drive. I'm going to have a drink, hang out, laugh, have a good time, and I'm going to leave because I have boundaries. I set my boundaries on what I will and won't do, and my boundaries, I, I don't need other people to agree to my boundaries. That's not what they're there for. Your boundaries are your boundaries, okay? So... And that's what this book is all about, is about teaching you to be in control of those boundaries. Boundaries at work. I know a lot of you have J-O-Bs. And listen, I can only hope that wherever you work, they inspire you to help other people and to build a community so that you're part of something much bigger. I'm so blessed. I mean, I really am. Because I get to live my dream of being an investor and helping other people live their dreams. And I have a staff that is so involved in helping me build this dream because they're affected by all of this and they realize it's much bigger than me. It's much bigger than them. We're a community that's helping others grow. And that is huge when you think about it. So when you can have a business that you can make money, you can have fun, and you have a bigger calling, man, I, I pride you on that job. If you have that type of job, I commend you for finding that type of home. So let's talk about that. Boundaries at work. Here's this. Work at age eight wasn't fun, he says. And because it wasn't fun, it was bad. So do you understand? Like we're taught at a young age, work's bad. So when we get older, we don't want to work. It's not fun. I got to go in and do this. But it's because we're not culturating ourselves, our children, our friends to understand how to perceive work from good and bad. It's all about contributing. What are we building? Work exists before the fall. And some of you may understand what the fall is. It's in Genesis 1.28. But it was always part of God's plan for humanity to work, okay? I'm not going to get all biblical on you today, but if, if you want, you should really check out a website. And um, Jill, if you can put this on there for him, it's called the, the Bible Project. Really great resource, and um, maybe we can have another time to go over all that. But here's problems in the workplace. If people took responsibility for their own work... Oh, man, you want to talk about something that drives me crazy? Is when everybody tries to push everything off on somebody else. Well, I didn't do it because of them. Well, I was waiting on them. Well, I was waiting on them. Well, okay, if you waiting on them has a direct impact of your outcome, then guess what? It's you that needs to be responsible for that, not them, okay? So let me read again. If people took responsibility for their own work and set clear limits, most of the problems for which I get consulted would not exist okay problem number one getting um, uh, saddled with other person's responsibilities Woo! how many times does that come you know what that really comes from sorry I'm sweating in here today they got the heater on like 78 in here and I'm a hot-blooded individual stand next to me on a cold day you'll start sweating um, so here's what, what was I talking about? Oh, other person's responsibility. So here's another big one. And, and a lot of times in a work environment, you might, listen, I love positive people. I love people that come in smiling and just love that they have somewhere to work at in a friendly environment. Like those people I want with me until the end of time because I want to surround myself with amazing energy, high positive people. Okay. That's what I want is high positive people in my life. And so, the downside to that, listen, can you guys hear me real quick? Let me just get a thumbs up. I need to do a mic check every once in a while because I don't want you guys sitting stagnant. I only got, I got about five more minutes with you here and then we'll, we'll get out of here. Um, but I got a little feedback since somebody was having an audio problem. I think it's a Facebook thing because it's been going in and out of like uh, fuzzy. Isn't that appropriate? In and out of, oh, there's my thumbs up. Okay, great. We're going to keep going. So personal responsibility in the workplace. If you're positive, let me go back to that topic. If you're positive, I love you already. If you're a positive person, I want you at my events. I, look, I got an event coming up. It's coming up in like May 12th, Freedom From Flipping. You need to be at that event. It's a new event. You need to be there, okay? 
And if you're a positive, I want you there. I can't, I literally, I love being around positive. I can't stand going a day without being around positive people. And I love high energy people. But in the workplace, it can be a drawback. And let me explain why. Because look, the owner of the company may love you, but there's always somebody in that company that is extremely lazy, okay? And lazy people tend to push their work over onto extremely positive people. Because why? They're positive, they love life, I wanna get everything done, which is why I love them, but there's no boundaries there, you with me? So they tend to take on everybody else's stuff and that leads to personal responsibility. And you need to make sure you keep your personal responsibility for what you need to do and keep your boundaries in check and say, no, I can't get to that right now, but you just let me know if you need some help when I'm done, okay? All right, moving on. Problem number two, working too much overtime. Listen, if you're a, an extreme... need to set boundaries for yourself, okay? Because if you don't set those boundaries for yourself, no one else is going to set those boundaries. And if you don't set those boundaries, then you can't come back and complain that you're working too much overtime if you didn't set those boundaries. So it's really the choice you made that gets that put on you. That is called, the remember, one of the two controllers. All right, so set boundaries in your work, review your job description, make sure you know what you're doing, uh, make a list of tasks that you need to complete so that you have your own personal boundaries, make an appointment to see the boss to discuss if you're being overworked, it's very important. Problem number three, misplaced priorities. I love this section, I gotta read it to you. You need to realize how much time and energy you have and manage your work accordingly, okay? Here's another one. Listen to this, this is very important. Effective, listen, effective workers do two things. They strive to do excellent work and they spend their time on the most important things. People do excellent work but allow themselves to get sidetracked and that is because lack of boundaries. You're not setting the boundaries accordingly for yourself, okay? All right, one other thing I want to talk about here is finding your life work and then I'll go into the last part. Finding your life's work involves taking risk. You understand? Like, if you want to be great, then you've got to take risk. You've got to, okay? Toby said, I'm getting this book today. Good. I'm and glad you're. Not to forget to eat yours too. Yeah, and then you can get my book too. <laughs> All right, so um, finding your life's work involves taking risk risk. You'll never get anywhere in life if you sit stagnant and complacent, okay? First, you need to familiar, or first you need firmly establish your identity. This was what we we're talking about earlier, having those. So first you need to firmly establish your identity, separating yourself from those you are attached to and following your desire, okay? You must take, oh, listen to this. You must take ownership of how you feel. You have to take ownership. How you think and what you want. You must assess your talents and limitations, and then you must begin to step out and do your thing. You've got to dig deeper, okay? That's what you have to do. But remember, all this is about taking ownership. Boundaries for yourself. Out of control souls. This is a great part. Um, he talks about in success but stressful. So this is a little story he shares in here. And this is about out of control soul like eating, money, time, things that we let kind of get out of control on us. And one is he talks about this attorney and how she's super successful, but she's got a, a very stressful career. And she eats cookies and candy um, all day long in her office and chips and, you know, and all this stuff is really what's creating this fall in her and her energy. And it says, no wonder they call it comfort food because we're replacing one stress with junk that doesn't feed our body with the right energy. And it goes on to say, you would think, um, what makes overeating especially painful is that overweight is visible to others. So see, that's the downside when we do personal abuse, is that 
a lot of us tend to eat for comfort. And hey, look, I've been one of those for a long time in my life, and I've helped, you know, lots of help to get me out of that. But it is definitely something that you see. It's a visual abuse, but there's other abuses that we can't see, so we have to set boundaries. Here's another one, money, okay? People have tremendous problem in many different areas dealing with money, including the following. Listen to this, okay? Impulse spending, right? Careless budgeting, living beyond one's means, credit problems, chronically borrowing from friends, not having a savings plan, working more to pay all the bills, and enabling others by giving them money. This is about, again, setting boundaries for yourself, right? This is why I always say, you can never get your money right until you start getting your life right. Hashtag getting your life right, right? You'll never get your money right until you start getting your life right. And the only way you can start getting your life right is by digging deeper. You have to dig deeper, guys, okay? Let's talk about this. Most of us would certainly agree that we need to be in control of our finances. It's tempting to see money problems as simple, I need more income. However, the problem often isn't how, how much income you need, but also it has to do with how you live. We tend to want to live above our means, and that is a huge failure. Listen, guys, I've, I've had massive success in my life, but I don't go live in a $10 million house, and I don't drive, you know, a brand new Mercedes Benz. I don't do that. I don't want that. I want my life to be at a level that I don't have to work so hard to just live. I want to have a life of my houses and my responsibilities to be at a level that I can have an extraordinary life. I can travel and do great things and go great places. That, my friends, is what living is all about, okay? You need to understand. Now listen, if you're just joining me again, we're talking about boundaries, written by Dr. Henry Cloud. He writes from a biblical point of view, um, but he's great at helping you understand life in general, and he relates it to, if you're a Christian like me, how to take back your life from setting boundaries so that you can be in more control of what you do, okay? So we've been talking about, you know, out of control soul with eating and money. Now here's this one on time, okay? Time. Many people feel that their time is out of control, that they are um, uh, in the 11th hour all the time, constantly on the edge of deadlines. There just aren't enough hours to accomplish their tasks. The world early doesn't seem to be part of their personal experience. Some of the time binds these strugglers deals with all of, well deals with these. Listen to me. I got a business meeting. I have a luncheon meeting. I have a projected deadline. I have church and school activities, holiday mailings. I have to pick up the kids. People make excuses all the time. All the time about why they don't have time. But you know what it is? It's because you don't set boundaries with your time. You don't set boundaries in your life to allow yourself to schedule. Like, for instance, I, you can ask anybody in my office, anybody who works with me. My entire business life is scheduled after I schedule my family time with my children. Everything else comes after that. I make it very clear that what comes first in my life and what the boundaries are, okay? I don't make my business first priority. No, I make my faith priority. I make my family the second priority, and I make my freedom the third priority of the five Fs because freedom comes with what? That comes with your business. That comes with money. But it's my, my first is faith, my second is my family, and my third is freedom. That's my boundaries. That's my priority, okay? So he goes on, and then I got one more, and I'm going to wrap it up with you guys. He says, people whose time is out of control, inconvenience others, whether they mean to or not. Now, I'm about to say one big word, because he labels out four of these. Omnipotence. Omnipotence. I can't ever say that word. But these are people who have unrealistic, somewhat grandiose expectations of what they can accomplish in a given amount of time. No problem, I'll do it. 
is their motto. But you know what the problem is? Is they're letting more people down than they really are being a success. Because they're saying yes to everything because they think that they can accomplish all these grandiose ideas. And listen, I've had lots of partners in my life and they come in, they're like, we're going to do all this stuff. And I'm like, how long are we going to do all that in two months? you got to set boundaries. you got to take control of those people in your life, okay? Number two is over-responsibility for the feeling of others. This is huge, guys. Listen to this. They think that living a party to, they think leaving a party too early will cause the host to feel abandoned. That's not your problem. Let me, listen, <laughs> I'll give you a funny story real quick. <laughs> When I was growing up, and me and my buddies would go somewhere, we'd go to a party, or we'd go to a game, or whatever, I was never the type that felt guilty for leaving anything. I would go in there after I'd had enough time, and I would say, hey guys, I'm leaving, I'm going to the car now. And guess what I would do? I would go to the car. If they didn't follow me, I left them. And I didn't feel bad one bit, okay? Why? Because... I set it out. I told them I was leaving. If they don't want to follow me, they don't have to. My boundaries are not for them. It's for me, okay? You still do that. I still do that. Yes, to I do. To this day, we, are, we can always be like, hang on a second, where did that go? I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not hanging. Look, this is my boundaries. And when you gain that kind of control in your life, you go to bed every night and you sleep just fine. Okay, so think about that. Number three, lack of realistic anxiety. Okay, they live in, in so much, they, they live so much in the presence that they neglect the plan ahead of traffic, parking the car, or dressing for an outing. Listen, these are the type of people that say, oh, it starts at 1030, it takes me 15 minutes to drive there, they leave at 1015. They don't take in consideration how long it's going to take them to load in the car, how long they have to sit in traffic, what if there's a red light, what about parking, how about walking to the venue? They don't do any of that. So they're late always. I can't stand a late person. Like, it drives me crazy. Because I'm there on time, if not before, well, I'm usually there before time, and I'm sitting there waiting and waiting. I, it's so disrespectful, but the problem with that is, is it's because why? So you're allowing someone else to control. So if I have a meeting with somebody and they tell me they're going to be late, I just say, look, let's just schedule it another time. I'm going to gain control. It's my life. It's no one else's life. You're not going to control my life. And therefore, I'm going to set my boundaries. You understand? I'm going to set my own boundaries. I'm going to set boundaries in my life to be successful. I'm going to set boundaries in my life to find the greatest person in the world to be around me. I'm going to set boundaries in my life to only have people around me that want to grow mentally, spiritually, and physically, and have the constant understanding of growth. I'm going to set boundaries in my life to be successful in business, and I'm going to set boundaries in my life to put the best people around me to do that. I'm going to set boundaries with my family, with my children. I'm going to set boundaries. And that's why you have to do this stuff, guys. That's why it's called dig deeper. Dig deeper in who you are. Dig deeper in what you want. Dig deeper so that you can find the right organization that can be part of your family, that can teach you and help you grow. That's what we're here for. Dig deeper to find your core belief so you can be part of a family that's going to make you be the person you want to be. Dig deeper. Challenge yourself. I challenge you to dig deep into your mind, your heart, and your soul to figure out what you want to be and where you want to go. I challenge you to dig deeper in your workplace. I challenge you to dig deeper in your life and start putting books like this around you. Dr. Henry Cloud, Setting Boundaries for Your Life. It's a great book, okay? Number four is rationalization. They minimize the distress and inconvenience that others must put up with because of their lateness. Oh, it's no big deal. I was just a few minutes late. Yeah, but guess what? I'll never get that time back. Think about that. They, they don't care about your time. I'll never get that time back. Now, how many of you on here understand the value of time? Yeah, let me see the thumbs up. Where are you guys at? You under, look, there's some. Yeah, the value of time is it's precious. It's one of the most precious things in the world, guys. And the time you have right now, you need to be using that tremendously. 
You need to be applying that in your life, your world. You need to be applying that into who you want to learn from. You, and you've heard me talk about in this book, he talks about you need to have a support group. You need to have a coach, a mentor in your life. You need to get around people that do and want the same things that you want. You need to associate. Let me tell you something. Being alone is the worst thing in the world. Trying to build a life for yourself or an empire is the worst thing in the world if you're alone. You need to connect with people. You need to be part of something. You need to think about this much bigger than yourself. You need to get on the phone with somebody, especially in my office, one of the student advisors, and say, look, I need some serious help. How can I get somebody to help me grow my business and be bigger and better than I am right now? That's a student advisor. They can help you do that. They can help you understand how to have boundaries in your life from the negative people. They can explain to you how big and how important it is to get negative people out and to start believing in yourself. Because let me tell you something, you got five seconds. You got five seconds right now. Because every decision you make in your life happens in five seconds. From the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed, when you make a decision mentally and you don't act on it in five seconds, your subconscious has talked you out of it. Because you have not set these limited boundaries for controlling the negative voice in the back of your head. Kill it. Get rid of it. Okay? Get rid of it. All right? So, let me get you to the last section here. And here's the one I'm going to leave you with, and then we'll wrap up. And by the way, I will, I will talk to you real quick about something else as we go to the end of this. And, um, but the last thing I'm going to talk to you about in this book, and for those of you that are just now joining us, we're talking about the book, Boundaries, When to Say Yes and How to Say No, Take Control of Your Life by Dr. Henry Cloud. It's an amazing book. It will teach you so much about yourself, your personal growth, who you really are meant to be, and how to become that person by understanding your invisible boundary lines and who to put in your life. But I love what he, he talks about here, um, and this is in the Boundaries and Yourself chapter. It's towards the, it's like the last part of that chapter. It's, if you are a victim, oh, the victim, right? What's a victim? A victim is somebody that thinks everything that's happened to them in their life is because of someone else. A victim is somebody who says, I'll never be successful because these are the things that happened to me. A victim is somebody who says, oh, I, I spent $7 for a book and I didn't make a million dollars. That's a victim. A victim is somebody who's always got excuses of why they can never become who they want to become. That's a victim. Listen, life is your choice. Life is everything about life is great. It's abundant. It's a beautiful thing. If you open your mind, your heart, and your soul and realize every choice I make in my life is my choice. I own my life. What has Dr. Henry Cloud been saying in this whole book? Own your life. Don't let others own it because when you own it, more opportunities happen. And I promise you, I promise you, when you stop blaming others and stop making excuses for things that have happened to you and start owning it, and it's my fault, it's my reason, I made the choice to it, an abundant world gets created from this. An abundant world gets created from that. And that's a choice that you can make. Do you understand how easy this is to fix? you got five seconds. Five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. What did you just choose? Think about it. You got five seconds to change your life, guys. And at the end of the day, the only person that will change it is you. That's it. That's the only person that will change it. So, guys, listen up. That's your book, your Dig Deeper book review. We were on here for almost an hour again today. Oh, my goodness, you guys. I'm loving this stuff. So if you're not aware, we do our, on a weekly basis, you need to pay attention to what we do. Mondays, we give you our REI success tip of the week, okay? Tuesdays, we do our real estate investing talk. That's a live Facebook go live, okay? We take questions, talk about deals. Wednesday, we do our Dig Deeper book review or interview with an expert. Thursday, we do our student success stories. So you want to watch and learn and be on this and be part of what we do. Be on here. Go to our blog page, reisuccessacademy.com. You need to be here. Freedom from flipping. If you have not got on the phone with somebody or been to our site and got engaged with what we're doing, then you really need 
to understand what we're doing. We've got a brand new event coming out where we're going to take you step by step and walk you through what's going on in today's market. We're going to help you set boundaries to grow your business so that you can become the success that you want to. So I encourage you, go to freedomfromflipping.com and the lovely Jill will put that down there for you guys and the phone number. You can always call in, talk to a student advisor. We're here to help. Um, and you can literally get your ticket paid for uh, if you call in today. If you call in today, we'll pay for your ticket. It's a two thousand, uh, I think it's like a two thousand dollar ticket that people have paid. If you call in today and tell them you were on the Dig Deeper book review and let them know that you want to come to the event. Uh, we'll waive the ticket price. All we ask you to do is put a seat deposit down. On Sunday, if you came the whole three days, we'll give you the seat deposit back. So you can come without having to pay for the ticket, okay? So I encourage you to do that. Go to Freedom From Flipping, call the number on the page, or call 707-247-4248. I've enjoyed this with you guys tremendously. Um, uh, you guys are great. I think you're great. And um, I think all this is great. I hope you guys are enjoying this stuff. I will see you again next week. And uh, don't forget, Tuesday live, Facebook, Real Estate Investing Talk. And Wednesday, we'll be back with another Dig Deeper book review. This is Zach Childress coming to you from the RS Success Academy and all of our family here um, uh, with the love to help you grow and keep you engaged. So I'm going to have Jill turn the camera off and I will say adios amigos unless there's any questions that came through. They want to know where you can get the book. Oh, my book. No. This book. Yeah. One we'll on my them, book. We'll tell them that. <laughs> you guys need to get my book too. If you haven't got my book, here's my book. Um, this was a bestseller. We did a bestseller on Amazon. It's called The Beginner's um, creative real estate investing course. You can get that on Amazon. It talks about me and what all we've done and it lays out a plan for you. But guess what? You can get this on Amazon too. You can get this on Amazon too. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anyways, another one down. Dig deeper book review. I'll see you guys next week. Stay strong. Be proud of what you do. Stay engaged. Call us. Let us help you. We'll talk soon. Bye now.